Uh, how we doing, Facebook family? Um, you know, it's your host of Secret Knowledge Podcast. It's your brother, Michael Bruce, and I'm excited to be back here today with a special guest. I met him on the aisle. Happy end of that. His name is Shine and Refresher. Like, he got so much going on when it comes to saving these youth. So that's why I titled this segment Saving Our Youth because he catered more to the youth. Like, and that's what really made me reach out to him because I'm about encouraging the youth. So, Shine, man, let the world know, man, where you're from, like, what you about, what you stand for, my dude. What's going on, everybody? It's Shine Jackson on the mic. It's been a while, it's been a wild world. But, um, you know, coming back today here on Seeking Knowledge to, you know, speak about the youth and, you know, saving our youth and stuff like that. You know, shout out to my brother Demarcus Buser, uh, for, you know, inviting me onto the show, uh, giving me an opportunity to speak my knowledge. You know, some of you guys, we're talking about some real talk right now, you know, so we need everybody to share this video. We need everybody to let people know that me and Demarcus are online right now, guys, because we're doing a phenomenal show. We're talking about kids our future and how we're going to say to you. So a little bit about myself, um, I'm Sean Jackson, the refresher, well, Sean, the refresher Jackson. And, um, you know, being able to overcome homelessness, um, the loss of my mother, the loss of my father, um, the loss of my grandfather, uh, the loss of so many other loved ones in my family, uh, being able to turn my pain into my passion, uh, my pain to my purpose. You know, um, I want to do it for the same for the youth, you know, growing up as kids, you know, back in the day, we have the OGs in the hood to test to, for somebody that's testing yeah. a lesson for somebody that's to learn. I like how you said that you turn your pain into your passion. I say I turn my pain into my purpose. Man, I like that, bro. So like I know you catered a lot towards the youth. So what really made you start catering towards the youth, bro? Like where what made you go that route? Like you because from me talking to you, I know you was, you was an athlete. I don't know if you used to box. You were an author. But you decided to take the route of saving our youth. What made you decide to go that route? Please tell me that. As you begin to develop and expand your skills and your talents, go this route. Um, you know, just having children of my own, you know, um, you know, I, I, I love inspiring youth. And I believe that once you become a parent, you know, you automatically have to be the example. You know, um, being parents, man, like our kids, kids are sponges, you know. So uh, whatever you do in life, I feel like your kids going to want to be better than you want, want to go after your dreams and goals. You know, one thing my son told me, Elijah, um, I love him so much. You know, he plays football. And I asked him, I said, son, who's your favorite football player? Who's your favorite NFL player? He said, dad, you're my favorite player. And to me, that, that touched me, man. You know, so I had to redefine my my mind and really you know chase greatness bro because it starts with me you know what i'm saying if i want my son to be great i have to be great you know and it starts with the kids in the community as well too you know i say this all the time man lebron james got his own kids he look up to you know kevin durant got his own kids he look up to it's time for our kids to look up to right. us you know what I'm saying? the black kings of the community man you know stuff like that so that's why i turn my direction towards the youth you know um all cultures are bad, don't get me wrong. But it's specifically in the black culture, man, was growing up, um, we don't get a lot of a lot of love, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like a lot of people deter away from the bad children and stuff like that. So we gotta attack those ones who are in the streets, man, and just go after them, man, and, and change their mindsets, man. You know what I'm saying? And I like how you said it because, like, I like what you're doing because me growing up as a youth, bro, I didn't have no guidance. Like, I, even though I had guidance, but I didn't because I grew up in foster care, but I was hanging. That's what made me run to the street, the foster, being in foster care. So I ran to the street, started hanging in the street, started doing things I'm not proud of in the streets. And I was a youth. And I'm thinking, like, I made it out. I made it through so much in life. Like, I overcame a lot. So that's why I really want to come back and care for you because there's youths out here that probably hanging in the streets and hanging around people just because they don't have no father figure in their home. Or they mama always at work most of the time. They mama doing the best she can to take care, take care of them. So the next thing they know, if it's not school, they going to turn to the streets. So, bro, I like how you are more catering to the youth because that's, like, that's what I want to do, bro. We need, because I look at it like, I got kids, bro, and I you. It's the future, bro. If we can't get the future together, that lets you know what type of future we're gonna have, bro. So how long you been doing doing your program, bro? And come to catering to the youth. How long you been doing it? Um 
for a while now, man. I've been, you know, doing that for a couple of years now. I started when I was homeless um, in Maine. You know, I gave my clothes off my back and shoes off my feet to people who don't have much, man. You know, some of the kids who can wear my shoes, you know, I took my shoes off my feet and gave it to them. You know, I took my hat, the same hat, just literally the same as that actually. Um, I gave it to somebody in, in the homeless shelter, man. I got the same hat back in three different colors. Um, you know, being able to bless them and see their faces, how it uplifted their spirits, man, um, because they didn't have anything. They didn't have much. So when they got something nice, it really inspired them, like, you know, gave them gave them hope. You know, that's all we can do nowadays, give people hope. And that's what I love doing, man, is giving hope and let them, you know. And that's what I like doing, giving hope. And I like how you said you went to the um, homeless shelter. Like, cause I used to do that, like, back home when I was in St. Louis, Missouri, I used to do outreach. And I didn't went to homeless shelters. I didn't do outreach work while I was passing food out or passing clothes out. When I was even staying in the shelter, I was passing stuff out, like giving away my stuff, like, because I know how it is not to have. But what's crazy, bro, when I was homeless back home, bro, I didn't see so many youth, bro, like out there. I didn't see. Like they are so young and not just young and out there, they young and on these drugs, bro. Like it's really messing their life up. So that's why we come in. That's why I want to come in. I want to start where I'm at, bro. And, but I got to find the right people because I really want to save our youth, bro. Because I know a lot of our youth out here, they have potential. They know how to do right. It's just they are wrong, wrong all the time because it's, it's what they see. Like if you, if your environment, it's all you see. You become a product of your environment. Exactly. So I'm. I want to. I'm here to look. If y'all got kids out there who need inspiration, reach out to me, man. I can encourage them. Like I, I can't. I'm not no certified coach, but I, I can certify therapy. Man, bro, I just love your movement, man. You doing a good thing, bro. So, thank you. What's next for you, bro? I just want to know what's next. Um, the refresh. Like what's next? I know you working with the youth program. I know you um an author. Um, what's what's next though? Uh, writing, I'm writing my new book as you speak now, man. Writing a book. Uh, I'm sharing the uh, video right now, man, so we can get some more views in here. But um, I just love. I'm writing a new book that's coming up next, man. Um, I got speaking engagements coming up. I'm trying to speak more on stages. You know, trying to get more people inspired, get people going in the right direction. Um, you know, I got. I'm trying to put together a youth program. Um, you know, so that way youth can have someone to look up to when they get out. You know, one thing that we face growing up as, as young black men is that we ever get arrested or get a charge, you know, that was used against us for getting a job, you know? So my goal is to create a platform with kids who mess their lives up, you know, who needs a second chance, because some of those kids are good kids. Not all of them, I said all kids, not all of them, you know what I'm saying? But some of them are really good kids, you know? And all they need is the right guidance, man, and the right push. So that's, that's what I'm trying to work on now as well too, you know? And that's good because, like, I have a, I'm an author as well. And I would, once I get it in situation, I'm going to send you some of my books, bro, just to pass out to the youth. Let them know, like, see, because people don't realize when you are author or when you got like a tool, that's, that's, that's how you get it started. Like, that's how you get your conversation started. So, but I want to save our youth, man. I'm not, I just want to save my kids, man. Yeah, I want to yeah. save everybody else's kids that they got to go out there and hang in the streets. So they feel like they Hang with this person to prove a point. Look, I'm gonna tell you all my youth out here that's gonna be doing it. It don't make you a lame or it don't make you less of a man if you tell a person you don't want to hang with them or you don't want to hang in the streets or you want to take a different route. It don't make you weak. It's, it's actually saving your life because I don't know, like, like with everything going on, man. It, it's teenagers, like they, it's, it's they not really lasting long, man. It's like they not looking to see. 18, 19, 20, man. So that's why I want to put some programs together, whether it's have a, a out in the sun, whether it's taking the kids out to eat or going to the movies, man. I want to do more for the youth, man, because growing up, I didn't have that, really have that. Man. And, and me growing up in East St. Louis, Illinois, Brooklyn, Illinois, it's like the Midwest, you don't really have no inspiration. You only, the only thing you see is, is, is people selling drugs, people fight. So I really had to figure out on my own and had to figure out the route to take to become a better person. And when it all started by me finding um, different programs to go in as a youth, start going at, um, at the school activities, just start being around the right people. So when it comes to our youth, like you said, they, all they 
is to get around the right people because sometimes it's not what you know, it's who you know. And I and I'm pretty sure that every person you met, you I'm talking about any adult, because when I first met you, bro, you inspired me just off the, the conversation, like, and you are very passionate about yourself. And I never met a leader like it's so self just so mm-hmm. humble, bro, like who really here for the people, bro. Like you for the people, bro. Like and we need more men out here like that who not just out for themselves, who really want to help people elevate, bro. You doing a good job, right? I just want to say, you doing a, everything you got going on, bro. You doing a good job. I just want to say, continue to shine, bro. Continue to be great, bro. Continue to just elevate, bro. Because you doing a good thing when it comes to saving our youth, bro. Like especially because, and that's where it all started. Like once you, once, like I said, once kids come in the picture, or once you be around your nieces and nephews, or not even that, just everyday life. You see how you feel, bro. I done seen you thought her, bro, younger than me, but look older than me, bro, because some drugs is taking control of them, bro. Like that, she was my lane, bro, but me off, bro, because it's like, I ain't got no guidance, man. There's probably no guidance in the home, bro. What we got to do, man, we got to eliminate the NIGGA mindset and bring back the king mindset, you know? Um, I feel like our youth have lost their crown. You know, they use that word as a derogatory word so much. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? And uh, they don't know their worth. You know, uh, they think that the streets is the only way, you know? So I think that what we doing now, man, is, you know, going out here doing podcasts. We out here doing great things in the world. They're going to see that. Kids in your, in, around our area, man, our community is going to see that. You know, especially you in your, in your area, man. Like, imagine a kid coming up to you and saying, hey, Mr. Mr. DeMarcus, I seen your podcast or I heard your podcast, sir. That's so cool. Like, could you show me how to do that? You know, yeah, that's, the, you know, that's, that's, that's what I, what oh, Go ahead, D. Yeah, and you know what? It feel good, like you just said. Like, I ain't gonna lie. It feel good, like, when you just you doing some positive and, like, a, a kid acknowledge you, like, yeah, hey, I know you. I know your story. I know where you came from. And you are like i love when kids come up to me bro and say that oh i might somebody read your book or somebody told me something about you and i and you you were very inspirational like and that's why bro i'm really trying what's what's next for me when it comes to saving our youth bro i'm trying to get in these schools and speak bro because i ain't gonna lie bro we really got me started doing a podcast and i know you know this person bro eric thomas bro et that's my guy that's who got me podcast bro like just hearing bro's story, like, man, he got that dog in him, bro. Just hearing his story, like, how he was in a band of bills and slept in trash cans. I mean, I said slept in trash cans. He ate out of trash cans, but he yeah. slept in a band of bills. Yeah. He probably slept in trash cans, too. I'm just making sure E.T., you know y'all, man, you inspire me. But that's what really got me started. Um, Really want to cater more to the youth. So that's why I'm really trying to get in schools, bro. Like, I want to get in schools, group homes, even if I can just get a crowd, bro, where – I'm speaking to five youth. I'm fine with it, bro, because that's what I want to do, bro. I want to save our youth, bro, because they up next, bro. If they up next and they not in the right mind or don't have the right tools, you can just imagine what type of lifestyle they're going to go. That's going to be to the streets. They're going to be tied in with the wrong people, nine times out of ten. And they probably not even going to make it to C21. I'm just being honest. This is how the world we live in now. But look, bro, they the future, though. You know what I'm saying? I tell people, if you want to change the world, you got to think about it. Man, you got to think about it. We get in our 30s and 40s now, right? So by the time we, by the time we get in our 50s and 60s, right, the kids not the kids are kids now going to be in their 20s. And that's the world we're going to live in as elders, bro. You know, so it's only going to get worse if we don't step up now and make a change, you know, like. I want my son to grow up in a, in a safe environment and in a safe future. Like I want to be able to walk out my door at 65 years old and not get shot down or robbed, bro. And that that's the way yeah. it's going right now, unless we make a change, you know. And we need to make a change, and the change starts with us. And like everybody that's tapping in to listen to this, man. Look, if y'all got ideas of how we can save our youth, man, tap in, man. Comment because it's not just us; it's everybody. We all need to come together, like as a community, because. It's one word you find a community if you break it down. You find the word unity. If we can come together as a community, we can unify ourselves and save our youth. Man, let's do it, man, because I know a lot of people got kids. Man, I know a lot of people got kids that's doing the wrong thing. So let's come together and save our youth, man, because they up next, man. And if they out here lost, just think about the generation that's going to come behind them. They're going to be even lost because we did not 
Step in to save this, um, this generation. Like I said, man, man. It, starts with us. it starts with the the parents, starts with the adults first. You know, um, I tell people all the time, man, you have to be be phenomenal, be forgotten. You know, um, we can't expect our kids to go out here and, and be great if we don't lead the way. It's all about being a true leader. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I tell my son all the time, you know, don't don't watch the next man, watch the best man, and that's how you're gonna be successful in life and grow in life. You know. Okay. That sounds like something I read up in. Uh, I'm reading this John Maxwell book on leadership, and that's something he said up in there. Like, great leaders, basically, great leaders reach out to other great leaders. Exactly. Great leaders have great followers. You, you got to be a follower to be a leader. You had to follow somebody that led you down the right path. So that's why we're trying to get the youth to follow this right path and, 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 and man, and, and do right for it. Man, I'm not saying like I'm perfect because I'm definitely not. But I didn't make so many mistakes out here under the sun. Like that's why I did. I wrote a book, but I'm not perfect. But my experience in life really changed me to want to do better, not just for myself, but for my kids. And I like to inspire other kids, bro. Like I be riding, bro. If I see a, um, a teenager or a, um, or a youth or something walk across the street, bro, I be like, man, look, bro, tie your shoes up first and make sure when you walk across the street, make sure you look both ways. Exactly. Make sure you look both ways. And bro, exactly. I love doing it, bro. I love doing it. I love responding to you telling them like, man, you don't gotta do that. You ain't gotta hang hang with this person. They don't mean you no good. Exactly. I, can, I be telling them I came from this. I came exactly. from this background, so I definitely how it is. Fuck, excuse my friends. Forget trying to fit in, man. Forget trying to fit in. You get more recognition when you stand out. What you think, bro? Uh, nah, you right, bro. You get you get way more respect if you um. You know, lead lead by example. You know, um, I tell I told my son that. You know, I told my son if you are you playing basketball, you are you playing football, you got a scholarship to University of Florida or like University of Alabama. The same dudes in your hood that's clowning you gonna be loving you. Oh, Eli, man, you going to Alabama, man? That's what's up, man. What's up, bro? Like, nah, man. Like, you know, you got to continue to find the better version of yourself. You know, what I'm saying you will never ever be the best copycat, but you will be the best version of yourself. You just gotta believe and have hope in yourself. You know. And that's why I love my job, man. At Braxis, bro, working with troubled youth, you know, you have the opportunity to sit down hands on and really talk to these kids and really get down to the the root of why they doing what they're doing. You know, a lot of these kids are only are the man of the household. You know, don't have a father figure in the household, and their mother's raising them. You know, and um, they don't have that person to go look to or talk to. You know what I'm saying? So they turn to the streets. And I guess that was basically my uh my story. I had no role model. I grew up in foster care. Uh, my big brother's been locked up for a little minute. Like he was my um my role model, like my daddy figure, because I, I didn't have no daddy figure. So it was like I don't think I know. It's a turn to the streets. And you come to find out the people I was hanging in the streets, and they didn't really they didn't really care about me. They didn't care about what I can do for them or what I can do for them. So. I really just dissing myself, bro. Really just so I was trying to figure it out, bro. And and bro, like I said, I, you can tell I was a lost dude, bro. I caught a gun charge at 18, bro. I caught my first gun charge at 18, bro. The same year I graduated from high school, it's the same year I caught my gun charge. And that's when the year I was in and out of trouble, bro. in and out of trouble, in and out of trouble. But I can just say it's been over nine years since I got in trouble, and I'm proud to say that because I had to really wake up because I got it. I was a dupe when I got in trouble, so if I were to keep going down that path, you already know my life is all that. I probably wouldn't even be sitting here telling my story, to be honest. Exactly. Exactly. I'm proud of and, you. And, and what I think is, man, we gotta we gotta we gotta turn our focus on on all the youth, not just specific youth, on all the youth. Like, for example, I have an engagement coming up in Maine. I got to go back to Maine to speak at a YMCA to a group of youth. And that's good. I love that. But then we got the other youth, like at my job at Braxton, you know, that has the gun charges, um, you know, has all different types of charges. And um, dealing with those kids is different. But like like I said, we able to reach every child. You ain't going to reach every child, but we be able to reach some of them, man. And make an impact in those kids' life, and they tell you to your face that you made an impact in their life. It makes you feel good, you know. Um, just changing lives, in period, in general, man, makes you feel good as a person. You know what I'm saying? That's why I love doing what I'm doing, man. Um, like I said, I used to be from the hood too, bro. Like I'm from 
from, from Tampa, Florida, man. Born in Tampa, raised in Jacksonville, bro. Jacktown, Florida, you know. Um, I lived in Chicago for, what, four or five months, you know. So, like, um, my mom was living where we were. Yeah, you know, my mom, she had sickle cell, you know, so she was in the hospital six months out the year. Um, my dad was a drug dealer, so he was never home. So you can imagine being six and seven years old, home by yourself, two kids, you know, never going to school, you know what I'm saying? So, but look, look, look how your life turned out now, though, bro. I feel like, even if I feel like in life, like we might not pay them, we might we not we might not dealt ourselves from cards. Uh, we probably did deal ourselves from cards, but it's all about how you turn off. Like, like I said, I came from the hood. I I, I didn't came from the shoot offs, murders. I, I I came from it. I came from it ever. Like you can walk in, like especially where I stayed there when I was in East St. Louis, you can just walk, and they had so much activity going on there because it's a crip set. So you can just lie to walk up there and see a body or see somebody fighting. It's just where I came from. I could, but I use that to get out, bro. I use that as my my um. I use my pain for my purpose. That was my pain, bro. Because I was a youth, like when I come home, so I was done when I was doing all this stuff. But I had to really like, this, is this the future I really want? Then when I when my kids came in the picture, I was like, this is this the future I really want for them, even though. Some things going on with my kids, but I feel love them. But the youth is up. Our kids up next. Yeah. Cheers, they up next, man. I like, I like how you said we got to cater all the youth because I heard, I heard you stay on the um in the clubhouse room, and somebody was saying like I forgot the guy's name, but he was like he was talking about the, the Bible and like how you should cater all you. But me, I'm just paraphrasing. But me personally. I feel like if I can talk to a thousand people, a thousand people, whether it's the youth, I'm gonna talk to them. Exactly. If they show me, I'm still gonna inspire them. But I feel like if you're trying to save the youth or save anybody, you just, you just can't pinpoint a certain, uh, certain time. I feel like you gotta get all of them. Like you never know, you might talk to 10, 10 youth, ten teenagers, and out of that ten, you might get one or two. And be like, you know what, bro? What y'all saying? Yeah, I'm gonna give it a try. I ain't hanging with y'all no more. So I feel like you gotta reach everybody, bro. You gotta cater to all, all the youth, like all walks of life, whether you was raised in the church, whether you was raised in um, a single parent home, whether you was raised with both of your parents, whether you was raised in the street, whether you uh, dropped out of school, whether you, you gotta cater to all the youth, bro. That's how I look at it, bro. That's how I look at life. You gotta cater to all the youth, bro. People don't see me like that. People just kind of pinpoint. Certain, certain errors or certain people. Nah, man. Look up. We need to save all our youth, man. We need to save all of them. <laughs> some of them don't want to be saved, so, though. Um, some of them don't want to be saved. I tell you that. And those yeah, ones, some of them don't. yeah, you can tell for those ones who don't want to be saved, but for those who want to be saved, man, I really feel like we should spend the time with those who want to be saved and then, you know, cherish those moments, man. Like, um, you know, my cousin, for example, he's doing a, um, a 10 year bid right now in prison. And I wish I was home with him because that would never happen. I've been left behind, you know, so it's all about just yeah. being there and being the presence, man. So that's why I said, man, as, as parents, man, I need to be there with my son. My son lives in Florida. You know, my daughter lives in Maryland. Um, it's very vital you know, for, for parents to be in their kids' lives. Like, I need to be in my son's life. You know, I'm going to be. Don't get me wrong, I will be. But like, you know, he's in Florida and it's very vital as, as especially as fathers, bro, as fathers to be there, you know what I'm saying? Like for, for, for the boys, you know? So, uh, because normally the boys turn to the streets and they turn to the homies who are not doing good and they, they turn to the influence and that's how they get caught up, you know? It's basically my story, like how I got caught up, man. But I'm like I said, I'm grateful that I ain't been in trouble in nine years, bro, and counting. That's why I'm trying to get into a lot of things, like cater to the youth. Cause, and I feel like it's, don't get me wrong, I'm not throwing no shots. But it's, it's some adults out here that need some um some training, too. Don't get me wrong, because like we said, it started with the parents. And and kids, and one thing I know about kids, they imitate what they see. They do what they see. They don't, they don't you ain't got to tell them what to do. If they see you doing this, they don't feel like, oh, yeah, he's doing it this right. So... And that's what me when I was a youth, like my brother, like I say, I got a brother that's been locked up since I was um 18. I'm 36, I'm 37 this year. And that was my inspiration. Like we I went to Foster, he we went to Foster, and that was my inspiration, bro. Like looking up to him hanging in the street. So I was like, I'm gonna go to school, I'm gonna go to work, but when I get back, when I get done, 
I'm hanging in the streets. I'm gonna do what I want to do, and I'm gonna still get up and go to school. I'm still gonna get, I'm still get up and go to work. But it's like, even though I thought I was doing some right, it's like I was still spending more time in the streets, hanging around the wrong people. So I really had to like, you know what? I started changing my thinking, bro. I started changing the way I think. Then I started changing the, the people I hung around with. Then I got to start changing the, the places I um, started going. And bro, like I'm proud to say, bro, I uh, I ain't been back home in like two years now, bro. Like eight or nine years since I've been back home. But I'm happy with my decision. The more the farther I go, the better I get. Them. And no, I'm not acting for better in life. And no, I don't think I'm better than nobody. It's just I make better decisions now. No, I agree. You know, you, you change your mindset, everything about you change, you know? Exactly. And if you got to get the youth to do the change, they mindset. To pay. And you know what? It, it, it was probably me growing up, like, growing up watching all these gangster movies like um, Belly or I don't know all these gangster movies I heard. You thinking like, hey, I want to live that life. So you start putting it in your mind like, yeah, this I'm for the turn of on. Nobody say they get money. I'm for the money. And I'm gonna be honest. How it started with me, like watching movies and trying to go out there, like yeah, I can live this life. And actually start going out there, doing what I see in these movies. Cause I'm thankful, bro. When I was young, bro, it's a lot of stuff I did that I didn't get caught for, bro. And I'm grateful. Cause if I was caught for that, bro, I wouldn't be here, bro. So that's why I really want to save our youth, man. That's why I really want to catch our youth. Man. If I can change this person, bro, change their mind. I feel like I did my job, bro. Yeah, I like I said, and again, like Lisa was saying, it definitely starts with the adults. You know, uh, we gotta start taking accountability, man. <clears throat> Having self discipline. You know, people look at self discipline as as a negative as a negative thing. It's really not. You know, self discipline leads to self love. Um, stuff like that. Right. We gotta teach our kids to love them, love themselves. We gotta teach our kids to be the like you know, show them that self discipline and stuff like that, man. Being able to do things. Um, and get it done without somebody telling them to do it, you know, and stuff like that. Like, I teach my son self-discipline, you know, um, get up and go and work out. You love basketball, you love football, you know, go out there and work out with your friends who play basketball, who play football, you know, have that discipline to go out there and, and train every single day because you're in 10, you know, you're 10 years old. So imagine where you'll be at in 10 years if you continue to train now and work on your, your craft now, how far you'll get in wow. turn. 20 when you get 18 you know how how great and how how phenomenal you would be because you put in the time and effort and 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 work on your craft right now you know and that's the only why we talk to you bro because you like you're you're very strategic with your program like you you have stuff in place for you that's why a lot of you are lost in the cities they in because it's not nothing in place like it's not no more at the school program it's not no more you can hang out at the school with the teacher or go to um we set like i was in a work program when i was in uh in the ninth grade so it was called we set it was a work program i don't remember the name but it, i don't remember what the word stand for but it was called we set see it was programs out there don't get me wrong it was a lot of programs out there when i was growing up as a youth but it was me deciding like i don't want to fight i'm gonna do this and i still want to do this hanging in the street i'm gonna do this but i'm still going over there but I'm telling my youth, man, y'all got to do this and, and do this. I can just get on the possible pet now, like, like bro said, you, your son two years old, you can work out every day. By the time he get 18, 18, 20, like, if y'all just do some positive now, by the time y'all get our age or whatever, man, y'all to be set. Like, it took me a long time. I had to bump my head a couple times. Like, I had to sit down, do some time. I had to bump my head. I had to started a few times, a couple ass I, mean, I had to give a couple ass whoopings. But at the same time, it shouldn't be like that for our just coming up on us if they got the right people in their life. The spy in them. You tell them like, man, you can put that gun down. You don't make you less of a man if you can go in the house and read a book. That don't make you less of a man. You ain't got to hang out and, and stay on no weed and let uh, hit licks, bro. You ain't got, I'm telling you, you don't got to do that. So to all my youth that's doing in, that's still tap in, Y'all ain't gotta say it, though, man. Y'all ain't gotta talk man. That shit ain't cool, man. That, that, that only happened in the movies. Excuse my cousin, but that's only good in the movies. Because I heard it get real. I heard them get real. Like when you get hit with a book, whatever, it's, it's real. I heard it's not no, oh, this acting, it's a fake gun, fake bullet. Now, nah, 30 is real, folks. I'm telling y'all, man, get off them streets, man. If y'all drop out of school, I'm telling my you, go back to school, man. If y'all don't wanna know what's next, y'all wanna go to college, man, get a job, man. All right. Figure out what you good at, whatever you like to do, but man, leave them streets alone, man. Them streets dead, but when the whole man. world is distracted, 
you be focused. That's why I tell my son, when the whole world is distracted, you be focused. You know what I'm saying? Well, I like um, Because <laughs> you know, crazy, bro, because the news, I ain't gonna lie, they do put a lot of negativity on her, and it'll make you fearful. But me, I don't watch news. I don't watch news. I just want to make sure my own group, bro. I want to make sure they be good. Uh, I mean, I don't say it's not necessarily just my kids. My kids in Illinois, I believe one of them. Is, two of them in Illinois, one of them in um, Maryland, I believe. But why I'm here, where I'm at, man. I, if I see you, bro, like why we going outside? Why we staying with Heidi playing with her three kids, bro? I was like, man, you got some beautiful kids. Like it's it's, it's a point. Like she's a cool mom, and she's doing everything she can to make sure her kids don't end up in them streets. So I respect the single mom for single dads is out doing that thing. I respect them because. I don't know your situation, <clears throat> but I know you're trying to do something for your kids to, um, to have a better future. Exactly. Bro, it's been a great conversation, bro. Anything else you want to share, man? I can go on, man. When it comes to our youth, bro, I can talk all day. Like, we need to get programs, man. Like, YMCA's. Like, I need to go home. They had the, um, the Boys and Girl Clubs, man. Do, do stuff like that, man. Like, get you a like a lot of y'all 18, I believe, mean, go get you a membership. Like, work out, be in the gym. Why you all trying to hang in the street? Go to the gym and work out. Like, find you a, um, a, a place that got a track, a track, and run around a track, man. Like, do some positive instead of thing. You got to hang around your homeboys. Because at the end of the day, I'm going to be real. At the end of the day, all these people y'all calling y'all homeboys, soon that heat turn up, they're going to be singing like birds. They're going to be nowhere in sight. Yeah. You're right about that, man. That's why it's true. That's why it's very vital to have uh, people that's going, you know, throw logs on your on your fire. You know, like Will Smith said, you know, look at your last five text messages. Are those people throwing logs on your fire or are they pissing on you? <laughs> you know, so, and it's just very vital, man, to really surround yourself around people who's going to uplift you and fill your cup. You know, if, if they're not filling your cup, they don't deserve to be around you. Everybody doesn't deserve to be around you. And for the kids to realize that, you know, everybody doesn't deserve to be around them. Like they have their own unique power. You know, um, they think that they have to be around friends and be cool. Um, being cool is having your own, having your own businesses, you know, having your own connection, being able to travel to the United Kingdom. Like me, bro, I can go to the UK and get mad love in the UK. You know, make one phone call, I'm like, yo, Raj, what's up, my brother? I mean, I'm in the UK, the United Kingdom, bro. That's, to me, that's bro, cool. I come on, look, bro. You ain't got to say, bro, when you say UK, that's London, bro. Yeah, that's and the company cool. I just, my, um, I have, look, I know somebody in UK, bro. I look, look, I look, I like connecting with people all over the world, not just in the States, bro, just look. That's you cool. happy, bro? Oh, I got the call for it. Yeah, you know, now, now you can say you're a boss because you can go in any country and be known and get mad love as soon as you pull up. You know what I'm saying? That to me, that's cool. I, the kids are real, I told my kids that uh, Braxis, I said, until y'all able to go to different countries and get mad love from different countries, they consider yourself a boss. Being in the streets, being in the hood doesn't make you a boss, my man. I'm telling you that right now. Going out and, and making an impact and influence others to be great. That's what makes you a boss, you know what I'm saying? Having your own and encourage your others to go out there and get their own. Exactly. And this what, and you said it, bro. A lot of these youth out here probably looking look, looking up to their big homies, whatever they call them these days. I, I just call them big homies. And they looking up to them like, and it's like they got this. This who got them. Like, this is what they see. Like, oh, this my big homie. He's going to ride for me. He gonna look out for me when I get locked up. He gonna put commentary on my book. Or he gonna put money on my book commentary. Oh, I'm gonna take this charge for him. I'm gonna tell you how the pe people thought what I hung around growing up. So I'm gonna take this charge for him. Oh yeah, cause he gonna he gonna look out for me. You no, know he ain't. No, he ain't. Me, like he gonna he know you young. He know you, you gullible. So they keep people around like that. Cause I'm gonna be honest. I kept some you me growing up. I kept some young Thundercats around me like that. Cause I knew they were TDG. They were praying to go. But I'm not with all that. I'm telling y'all, if y'all got think y'all got a big homie, man, they not your big homie, man. They they just they not gonna look off for you like for real. I don't care how much money they put on your book. They only doing it because they need you when you when you get out. Exactly. Exactly. 
I learned it. Like, I ain't no love out here in these streets, man. So that's why I want to get many youth out the streets as we can, bro. Like, and like I said, I ain't got the resources right, not yet. But I do know I have a voice to encourage a youth. Like, man, it's, they so lost out here, bro. Like, Man. Keep working, keep working, man. Keep working. I encourage you to write a book. You know, once you get a book out, I'm going to buy your book. But that's the first step right there, man, is having your book out. Once you got a book out, um, you can really go anywhere with that book and especially go speak on stages to like to these schools and stuff like that. Having a book, man, it sets you off in so many like areas, man, because now you can go to a school and speak and then show your book. And the school might say, hey, I love the way you spoke. I read your book and now the school might invest and buy books and put your books in their school because the way you spoke to the kids and that's crazy because my um publisher that's, that's basically the route like that's basically the route i'm on now like i'm trying to become a um I, well, I know trying i want to become a life transformational coach and mm-hmm. that's what i want to do bro that's what i want to do i want to expire before i expire so i really want to and cater, but i really want to focus more on our youth though even though we got a doubt about her that needs some tweaking up and fixing, but it's really towards the youth, bro. So I'm trying to get in group homes, boy. I'm, I mean, bro, I want to get in group homes. I run up shelters, bro. I really, I stand, I even stand on the corner, bro. I just want to play this movie, bro. Like I, I, I got to start somewhere, bro. And I know it's time, bro. Cause like I ain't gonna lie, um, I left my job, bro. Like I, um, job I was at, I don't work on nine to five because I want to focus more on. I want to focus more on what needs to be focused on, bro. Like my career, what to me, but I really want to focus more on our youth, bro. Like for real, because I, like I said, I was a loss. I was a loss seed. If I ain't get myself together, I wouldn't even be here. Like I was a loss, lost in the sauce. But I went always lost. I always had a good mindset. It's just when you got a good mindset, you hanging the wrong, wrong people, and you so think you need love. People can manipulate you, bro. They can get in your mind. A lot of people got in my mind, bro, to do this, do this, do this. And I just started getting people mind and having them to do this. I'm talking about people way younger than me. So I know how it is. When you feel like you got to, well, you feel like they got to fit in or they got to prove a point or this time and get my stripes. If you really want to get stripes, go to school, finish school, go to college. If college not for you, work a job. If you want to be a business owner, write a book, start a clothing line. You get more strikes by doing that because you your, your strikes will go far than just the neighborhood. Oh, <clears throat> uh, you get more than strikes, man. You get a lifetime of uh, a lifetime of respect. You know, uh, when you leave this earth, you know your book is still gonna be here. You know, when you leave this earth, your clothing line, your clothing brand, people who bought your clothes, still gonna have those clothes. You know, so even though you off this earth, you still gonna be here because your presence is here. You know. So. Man, anything you want to say before we uh, close? I'm talking around. I don't want to end this conversation, but I know you are busy, man. And I know you're busy and too. To, uh, to the world. Ah, uh, nah. Just be in tune, guys. You know, Champions Connect coming back. Um, more guests. I'm gonna have Demarcus on Champions Connect. Um, it felt good uh, being on his podcast, guys. This is podcast called Seeking Knowledge. You guys, make sure you go subscribe. Show love to my man's podcast. And for the refresher, myself, you know, guys, just being too. You know, I got more guests coming, and I'm gonna get back to doing my um, my podcast. We have a few guests coming in the room, a few views coming in the room. We just appreciate it, guys. We just talking about saving our youth, and um, just trying to refresh adults. That's my nickname, the refresher, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's my podcast. Yeah, I got. We gotta, we gotta refresh these adults, man. We gotta let people know, man. Like we gotta come together as adults, you know, and really get the the adults right before we get the kids right. We can't get the kids right if we can't get the adults right. So that's why I love that we did this, you know. And I love that we did this, you know. Hopefully, some people heard this and really got the message, man. Because again, it starts with us, you know. And uh, and and um, I mean, the love is um, strong. It's mutual, bro. Like support, um. Champion podcast, you know, support him. Everything he got going on, man. He on social media. That's Sean Jackson. Look, man, support him, man. Cause bro, yeah. for him to overcome a lot and come from the hood, man, he really used the hood and he he changed, man. And, and he inspired me to be honest, like man, I'm be real, like you inspire me every day, bro. Just like the way you get up and carry yourself, bro. And I just I, I had to really get me a uh, I got me a routine now, bro. I wake up and follow a little routine now. So yes, you inspire me like, when I picture you, you was like, yeah, I'm finna go work out or I'm doing this. 
That's inspiration, bro. You continue to be great, bro. But I'm yeah. done talking. I'm done talking. Yeah. Just remember this last this one last quote, man. How you dress is how you will be addressed. Ooh, that boy said, "How you dress will be how you dress." And I tell people that, bro. You got you got to dress the part. I tell people that you got to dress the part. So if you fit to go to an interview, you know you're not fit to go to a job interview with no t-shirt on and no um distressed jeans, a mess, and just some up some job, some place you can get a job like that. But you got to dress the part, bro. I'm done. Other than that, man, you got any closing words for the people, man, before I end it? Man, I just wanted y'all to say, man, y'all be blessed no matter what y'all going through. Y'all see the positive in every situation. And, man, I don't matter what y'all you going through, man, y'all kids going going through, be there for them, man, because sometimes all they need is a listening ear, man. Amen, amen. Well, you guys, it's been fun. You guys, tap in, show love. Um, it will be on YouTube. And, again, guys, this is Seeking Knowledge Podcast. Go show my man some love. Go show his podcast some love. Subscribe. Thanks. All of that, guys. Uh, me, Champions Connect, guys, on YouTube. Look it up. Go subscribe, guys. So love. And we coming back. We coming back, guys. We got our power. And just know this is real talk right here, guys. This is real talk. No baby talk. We here showing love to everybody, guys. So we here to inspire it all. Homeless, bad kids, good kids, grandmothers, grandfathers, mothers, fathers, all of that, guys. So just tap in, show love. Other than that, that's all I got. I'm done, boy. It was an honor to be here. Yes, sir. I'm in the broadcast.